Good evening, everyone, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. And this evening, before I start my sermon, I'd like to invite you for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you've done in our life. This evening, God, speak to us. We open our hearts. We thank you for the things that you have done in the past and things that you will do in the future. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm so glad to be able to speak to you this evening. And before we start any further, I would like to read a Bible verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. It says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. My brothers and my sisters, in this life, there are seasons. One season may pass and another season come. And one season may last a little longer than we would like it to be. And another season may last much shorter than we would like it to last for. Sometimes we want something good to last forever. However, the Bible reminds us that in this world, everything that there are in it, they are all temporary including the seasons in this life. In the good times, we must be thankful to the Lord to praise Him for everything that He has done. But in the bad times, we should not be discouraged. In the bad times, we should run to God, hope in God. The Bible went on to say in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 23, verse 4, it says the following, Even though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Each and every one of us will go through the valley of the shadow of death. That's the darkest times in our lives. Maybe we would lose a business, a job. Perhaps it's a person that we love. However, let us understand in our mind and in our hearts that those times are temporary as well. We are only going through it. We are not called to stay in it forever. So the Bible does not say, even though I will live in the valley of the shadow of death forever. No, it does not say that. It says we are going through. When we go through something, there will be an end to it. This evening, perhaps, you're sitting down listening to the sermon and you're thinking to yourself, yes, right now I'm going through a very tough time. Right now, I feel that I don't have any more hope. Or perhaps you feel, I've made such a big mistake that I don't think there's anything I can do to make things get to get better. Or perhaps you feel this evening that your life will get even worse as the days go by. My brothers and my sisters, remember, we don't live by our feelings and how we feel. The Bible tells us that we are to live by faith and not by sight. This evening, perhaps you're hearing God's words and you're thinking, well, if I feel better, then I would believe it. Or if my situation changed, if this season in my life would quickly pass, then perhaps I can feel better, I can believe. But our God wants us to live the opposite way. Perhaps we don't feel like we are blessed. We don't feel like we have hope. We don't feel like we are forgiven. But we must understand one thing. The fact does not change that God loves you. He has a great future ahead of you. And the fact is that when we are in the valley of the shadow of death, going through that time, we are to rely on God, His rod and His staff, as the Bible says. It is what protects us, what strengthens us, what guides us. Perhaps you have a business right now, and the business is not going very well. And you're thinking, maybe I'm going to go bankrupt soon, but before you even say those words or think of those thoughts, why don't you come to Jesus, surrender your plans, and say to yourself, I will do my best 
the best that I can, and I will leave to the Lord things that I cannot handle on my own. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, it says the following, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The word tribulation also means suffering. So in this world, it is true that we may have suffering. We might go through times that we don't like. We might go through situations where we might be meeting people that are hard to deal with. Maybe in your workplace, somebody's not nice to you in your school. Perhaps in the company that you are in or in the ministry and you feel that, wow, why do I have to deal with this person? Lord God, if you love me, why did you let this happen? Why did you bring this people in, these people in my life? But my brothers and my sisters, just like the story of King David, before he was king, he was a young man. He met Goliath, the giant, and that was a strong enemy. Everyone else didn't want to fight Goliath, but David stood up. And with strength that comes from God, he defeated the enemy. His hardest time brought him forward, upward, into one of the highest points in his life. Today, you might be feeling that tribulation after tribulation are happening, suffering after suffering, but be encouraged. Jesus Christ have overcome the world. Jesus Christ have overcome your sickness. He has overcome your problems in life. Now today, if you're feeling like you're suffering, come to Jesus. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. How are you supposed to come to Jesus? Come to Him in praise and worship and in prayer. Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have much time. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to praise God. Or I don't have time to go to church. My brothers and my sisters, it is actually the opposite. When you make time to worship and praise God, to come to church in the morning, however busy you think you might be, if you would stop for a moment and just read the Bible, at least one Bible verse. I guarantee you, when you open your heart and you surrender to the Lord, He will do for you the things that are impossible for you to do on your own. Now, the answers to our prayers might not be exactly the way that we would like it to be. We might know what is good, but no one thing. My brothers and my sisters, our Lord Jesus knows what is best for us. Amen. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, we learn that on the day when Jesus Christ comes back into this earth, what will happen? The dead in Christ will rise first. The Bible mentions the word dead as being or as a person who has fallen asleep. Perhaps. You have lost somebody that you love. Times might be difficult for you. However, know one thing. For those who love the Lord, when they die a physical death, they're only falling asleep. That's what the Bible said. 1 Thessalonians 4 went on to say that those who are dead in Christ will rise first. And verse 17 says this. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Now, we don't know when Jesus Christ will come back into this world. This earth that we live in, it is temporary. We don't know when our time will be to leave this earth. But. For as long as we live in this earth, no matter how good or how bad, 
the times might be, let us never lose hope. Let us always know that in the end, we have a sure destination for those who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who have accepted him as his Lord and Savior. They will have eternal life. And I pray that if you have never accepted Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, and you're listening to this, perhaps this is the first time you're listening and you're hearing the good news that Jesus saves. Open your heart. Receive him into your heart. Receive hope. Receive blessings from the Lord. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it says this. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. He has made everything beautiful. All the good times and the bad times, or the pain in our life, or the suffering, everything will work together to bring something beautiful. It will be like a puzzle. One piece of puzzle on its own may not look good. It might not even make sense, but when everything is being put together, in the end, if you've seen a puzzle, once a puzzle is done, it looks beautiful. But when the puzzle is not yet done, it's all, all messed up, you might say, wow, this is a mess. And today you might feel that your life is a mess. However, come to Jesus. Take life one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Leave tomorrow to the Lord. Do your best today. Have hope. Believe for the best. Maybe situations doesn't look good. Perhaps your relationship with the people that are closest to you are not so good. However, every single day, rely on God. Rely on His strength. Rely from the resources from heaven and not on your own resources. Do not rely on your bank account. Do not rely on your degrees from the university, but rely on the Lord. Oh yes, we have to do our best. Yes, we have to save up. Yes, we have to use our finances wisely. Yes, we have to, those who are in school, who are students, if you have the opportunity to, go as far as you can with your studies. Do your very best. However, never feel that your education is everything or your money is everything or your inheritance is everything. Always remember that Jesus is your everything and he is my everything as well. I would like to close with this. In my life, things hasn't always been easy. In my family's life, we went through many disappointments, many difficult times, but one thing is certain, that God is faithful. He has never left our family. And my parents, they may not have millions or billions of dollars to leave to me as an inheritance. And so far, the best inheritance, and I have to say not just so far, but it is and will always be the best inheritance that they have given to me. The best inheritance is the faith that they have passed down to me, faith in Jesus Christ that I can turn to in times of trouble, that I can turn to when things aren't going right, that I can always turn to every single day. And today, let us be sure that that inheritance is something that we will pass on to the next generation, to our children one day. Perhaps you don't have any children, but let it be something that you can share to the people in your community, people in your workplace, people that you might have a chance to encounter in the streets, people, strangers that you might encounter in the airport. You might ask, how can I do that? How, how is it possible for me to, to pass that on to them? By loving others the way that Jesus Christ has loved you, by forgiving others, by showing your love, 
by smiling, being kind to others the way that Jesus was kind to the people that he encountered in this world. If we read the Bible, Jesus' life and ministry in this world wasn't always easy. The road, the road wasn't always smooth, but Jesus always spent time in prayers. Jesus spent about three and a half years to minister, but he has never said that I'm too busy to pray to the Father. I'm too busy um, to do this and that. Jesus fulfilled the mission that God the Father has put, has placed in his life in this earth. And let it be today that we, my brothers and sisters, each and every one of us, become God's children who will fulfill the mission that God has given in our lives. And the mission is, as what is written in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, to go and preach the gospel to all creatures. Go into the world, amen? The world doesn't always mean that we have to actually go and circle the world. It could be the place that you're working in right now. It could be your home. And always understand when things aren't seem like they're going right. Just know one thing, the season is changing. That's all. The good things and the bad things in life will always bring something good in the end. If we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, every single step of the way, one day at a time. Amen. Well, before I close, I would like to give you an opportunity. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, perhaps you, you have been delaying or you think perhaps later on, perhaps next year, perhaps next week. I ask you, how do you know if you would have next year, next week, or even tomorrow? We don't even know what the next hour will bring. Therefore, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, open your heart and repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. My brothers and sisters, if you have prayed that salvation prayer, you have been born again. I pray that you'll continue to grow in your love for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've never been or you're not in a part of a church, go find a church where the message is preached, the good news is preached. And my prayer is that you'll continue to grow in life and you'll go through the different seasons in life with joy, with strength, and with hope that comes from the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.